Joining me now, Corey Lewandowski, a familiar name, former campaign manager for Donald Trump's 2016 campaign and now senior advisor with the Great America Committee, author of the soon-to-be-released book, by the way, Trump's Enemies, book number two, right, Corey? It's true. So let me start with something that, that Jeff was talking about here. On the campaign trail over the weekend, we saw the president a lot. Why is he saying so many things that are not true? What do you mean? Which one? So he talked, well, let's play one of them on the tax cuts. Go okay. ahead. We're looking at a major tax cut for middle-income people. Who need it? What was your time frame for that? I would say sometime around the 1st of November, maybe a little before then. But Stephen Mnuchin acknowledges there is not really a plan that's been outlined. Congress is out of session, so he can't do it before November 1st. He's talking about the caravan making claims that are not founded there. He's talking about even low-hanging fruit, op the opioids bill. He said hardly any Democrats supported it. You know, all the Democrats in the Senate supported it. Most of the members of the House did. It was actually wildly bipartisan. Why, why doesn't he tell the truth? So let's, let's go to the tax bill. Second, sure. I know that he's been working with Chairman Brady of the Ways and Means Committee for a period of weeks now, and as has the Treasury Department, to look at what they're calling Tax Cuts 2.0. The framework has been outlined. That bill is not going to pass before the election because the House is not going to come back into session for it. But that's not to say that they haven't started the framework on that so that whether the Republicans hold or don't hold the House, there'll be an opportunity following the midterm elections to vote on potentially a second portion of that tax cut. So that's fair. That's not what the president said. He said by November 1st, he's going to have this tax cut thing going. And that's just one example, Core, of some of these other things that, that the president has said that are simply not backed up by the facts. Why is he doing that? Does he think voters don't care or don't know? No, I think, look, the, the, this president has answered more time with the media than probably any other president in modern history. So he has the opportunity to go out and give his message, and, and the media has the opportunity to correct that message if it's not accurate. But what he's trying to do is talk about the success that he's had early on in the first 21 months of his administration, and I don't think he gets enough credit for the tax cuts that have been historic and have unleashed the economy to where they are today. And we've now seen, because of those tax cuts, more people working in America today than ever have been working in our nation's history. Part of that, Corey, is that he's not talking a ton about the tax cuts. He's not tweeting about the tax cuts this morning. Instead, he's tweeting about this caravan of migrants that is in Mexico, tweeting again these unfounded claims as Jeff Lane laid out. So you say that it's up to the media to correct things that the president says that are not accurate. But why is it such a misinformation campaign from him? Well, I think if you look at this caravan coming in, it's now swelled to 7,000 people, we're told. We're told that this is just completely uh, a grassroots effort and People are taking their lunch pails and walking what is the equivalent of 2,000 miles from where they're going into the U.S. border. That doesn't happen that way. And it, you can go back to the words of Ronald Reagan, who said, if we're a country that doesn't control your borders, you're not a country at all. And what this president pledged on the campaign trail and now has to implement as the president is securing our borders against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. But and what he said was, that's we have to make sure these people don't illegally cross and he's that talking is, about using the military. That's different, though, from what the president is saying. The president, first of all, these are people, as you know, that are escaping poverty. They're escaping violence. We have a series of fact checkers that have come out and said there's simply there's no evidence to support the claims that the president is making about, for example, Middle, Middle Easterners. So let me go back to that question just one more time here. He keeps saying things that aren't true. Well, I, I think, look, as it, as it relates to this caravan, I don't think we know who's in there. We do know there are dissidents from Venezuela in there. That's been proven already. We've seen that. We see that there are individuals who are probably paying somebody to join these. But the real question but, is... But that had, there's, no, there's not evidence to support that. Course. Well, there's, there's no evidence point. to and again, say they're good you, people either. I don't want to get into a, a back and forth on this particular right. piece because I'm asking a broader question that, respectfully, I haven't heard a great answer from or any answer from, look, from you. The, One of somebody that used to know, Anthony Scaramucci, was asked the same question this morning on the Today Show. He said the president lives in a reality field of distortion, to paraphrase that. So I ask you... Why can't the president just tell the truth? Look, he, he can tell the truth. and tells the truth all the time. But I think part of what happens in the media... All the time? I, I think what happens in the media is they either... Just very they, quickly, the, the Washington Post has said he said the most incorrect things. They have a f running fact check, incorrect claims that he's made thousands of them over the last two years. Look, uh, what, what's the level of the, of, the, of the check? Is it that there are more people working today, the Hispanic unemployment, African-American unemployment is the lowest it's ever been in recorded history? So that's I a mean, pivot look, in politics. I, I understand, You're pivoting but, away from the point of question but look, you can criticize the president all you want, but look at where the economy is and give him some of the credit he deserves for what's been done. And I think that's fair. And I think what his gripe is, is the media tends to focus on some of the things that he says that may not be factually 
Correct, complete. Correct, at all, right. But they don't give him the credit for all of the great things that have been done in the first 21 months of the administration. Right. So, That's a fair criticism. Let me move on, but let me just also point out that, you know, we did start the show by talking about the president's approval rating that is ticked up. I do think that it is the responsibility, as you know, of journalists to call it the president when he's wrong, which is, over this weekend, has been a lot. But let me ask you about the midterms, because the, Politico has this new report that says, according to two people familiar with these conversations, uh, the president distancing himself from a potential Republican thumping on Election Day. He's telling confidants that he doesn't see the midterms as a referendum on himself, something he has said publicly. And according to one person, the president has sort of pointed the finger at Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and says, these are their elections. If they screw it up, it's not my fault. So how can he have it both ways, Wait, taking it, credit it, for it, a win but not for a loss? I, I read that story in Politico today. There are two unnamed sources. And let's go back to what the president said in the campaign Well, the president trail. has said it himself, but too, he, yeah, but he literally also, said the words, this is not, I, I'm, no, I don't bear any responsibility the, for the president also said that his policies are on the uh, on the ballot this November. He knows that he's out campaigning tenaciously on behalf of candidates. He knows that the midterm elections are at some point a reflection on his policies and what the Republicans stand for. And he knows what's at stake. I believe you're going to see senators uh, increasing their Republican majorities in 15 days. And I think the House is going to shrink their majorities. But there is a very clear path right now, unlike two weeks ago, where the Republicans maintain that majority. It's going to be smaller. Don't get me wrong. But there is a path because the president on the campaign trail, and he has the opportunity to keep the Republicans in the majority, something that historical precedent says can't take place. So let me just make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. Now, you're saying that if the president, if in fact Republicans do lose the House majority, the president, despite what he said publicly, will take some ownership of that. Well, I think the administration has to do that, but you also have to put that against historical precedent. Barack Obama lost 63 seats in his first midterm. Uh, Bush actually gained seats, but that was largely because of the 9-11 tragedy, and the country was very much united. But then you go to what Bill Clinton lost, another 52 or 54 seats in his first. So so the historical precedent is there that the ruling party in a midterm election loses seats, and I think the Republicans will lose seats. The question is, is the wave going to be greater than the 23 seats, or is it going to be smaller? And if you look at district by district right now, in the place where Donald Trump is turning voters out, there is a true path forward for the Republicans to hold that majority. I want to bring in our panel here, who's to my left, but before I do, very quickly here, do you agree with Anthony Scaramucci that the president lives in a reality distortion field where he curves facts toward himself? You know, I don't know. I, I like the mooch a lot. Uh, I know he's got a new book out, and I respect him. But uh, what I what I have seen being firsthand next to the president is uh, he listens to what people tell him, and then he repeats those facts. And if those people give him the wrong information, sometimes it's a, the responsibility of the staff. Uh, Corey Lewandowski, thanks for coming on. I'm going to have you stay right here. I know you wanted to jump in there.